Welcome people. Once again, we're playing Pyramid 101. I'm trying to advance the science of pyramids on lenses, a gravitational lenses, just like optic physics. A glass lens can be used as a photon lens and increase the density of the photons into a tight spot where it generates heat. All right, here's a typical configuration when you were kids, you probably played with the magnifying glass. There's the sun here, and there's the length, the focal length right here. You're probably chasing ants around or burning grass or what have you. Or maybe even burning your friend's uh, hand or something if you held them. But uh, who knows? This is, um, this is the foundation of... Uh, lensing on the planet, nano lensing. We're going to get into that in a few seconds. Here's another basic uh, optic physics formula here for the most part. It's a kind of a simplistic uh, view of what's going on. You have the the image and when the focal point, the focal points uh, combine, that's when you have the uh, good clarity, good, uh, good um, vision. Some people need glasses. So uh, here's the eyeball at uh, 2f, and there's the uh, first focal point, and then, this, and then uh, you know it just comes right down into your uh, your uh, tight tight focal point. So um, that's the principal axis, the image, the object, and uh, light rays. Except we're not talking about light rays. We're talking about uh, well, we're talking about light rays rays right now. Excuse me, but um, we're going to be getting into gravitational rays. This is uh, macro lensing. I dub macro lensing. I don't know what they call it, um, but it's a uh, it's a galaxy being uh, lensed around another couple of galaxies. So you can see, you can actually see this galaxy, the light from this galaxy around uh, center objects because it's just it comes right around and bends the gravity bends the light out and comes it back into uh, Earth's focal point. If we happen to be at the focal point, we can see it, which this is a good uh, explanation or a, an analogy that, uh, you know, you can you can get a, a grasp on. So that's uh, dubbed macro lensing in the uh, world of hexagontum physics. And uh, that's that's uh, what's going on there. So you got the, uh, you know, the galaxy clusters, the lens galaxy images, distorted light rays, and then it all comes around straight through. Now, if, if, if there wasn't any gravity, the light would be blocked by these objects. But because gravity actually creates a lensing effect, it's actually a glass lens. Um, it's the same, same head has the same uh, physical properties of, of, of or uh, physical um uh, capabilities as a glass lens. Let's see, micro lensing. This is micro lensing at the uh, at 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 our solar system level. In our solar system, it's called micro lensing. Again, I'm giving giving it that name. Uh, actually, I don't know. Maybe Einstein already gave it that name. I think he did call it micro lensing. Maybe, uh, but anyways, all right. So here's your uh, solar eclipse. You know, I don't have the moon in front of the sun right now, but you'll see the uh, line of sight. And then uh, there's a star right here, appears here during the solar eclipse. But the actual true position of the star is behind the sun. But because the gravitational field will pull the light around the sun and allow us to see the actual light uh, from the star, even though it's behind the sun. So it's pretty tricky stuff. Um, this is uh, more lensing going on. This is the these are the Van Allen belt. Get you a nice spider shape here. Real popular picture in physics. Um, you know, you get the solar winds coming in. You get your uh, EMF, your electromagnetic fields, your Van Allen belts, and a few other, few other things. But again, it's it's uh, these are all set up like lenses. They're all lensing, um, rejecting the uh, solar radiation or protecting uh, you know Earth from being bombarded by uh, high um, radioactive uh, material so uh, you know that's that's kind of just a 
a neat little picture. It's probably it's kind of off topic, but I figured I'd throw it up there anyways because it's in, in effect it's it's more lensing going on with subatomic particles, like electrons, photons, uh, gravitons, and we're getting into the big lens right here. This is the uh, you know the moon. Obviously the moon here. It's kind of good representation of the um, the sizes size difference. So basically what I do is every every moon is more or less a um, not every moon every pyramid on the planet is 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 uh, in effect related to the moon's gravitational forces so when you see a of a pyramid it's actually a uh, an apparatus of the moon and the earth so it's uh, you can actually call them uh, you know moons I mean because they're little moons because they do uh, condense the gravitational forces in the center line of the pyramid. So, you know, this is obviously a big uh, pyramid here, but what what a moon does is it'll it'll create a dense um, focal point of gravity inside a geometrical mass, like a pyramid or a uh, geometrically shaped polygon uh, uh, mountain. Um, they're actually trapezoids. They're not real pyramids because they don't have the tops on them. You know, they never did. The the, uh, the way that pyramids operate is um, they operate as a trapezoid. Hence the word trap. What's a trap do? It brings things in. It pulls things in. Holds things in there. So the language is there. Um, you know, we've lost a lot of our history, but that's the uh, the root word. is It's a trapezoid, not a pyramid. Anyways, uh, this is the nano lensing apparatus, like I just uh, led you to. Um, obviously, is planet Earth, nice little blue marble, and uh, the best planet in the universe. And uh, here's the moon, and here's your pyramids. You know, a pyramid. So um, the uh, this is uh, these are the lensing apparatuses right here. This is this is uh, these two between the play between these two create a uh, um, an energy gravitational entity vortex at this uh, geometrical mass uh, trapezoid pyramid if you will I'll say pyramid just because everybody knows what they are they say pyramid instead of trapezoid but uh, that condenses the gravitational field inside the center line of that pyramid and consequently will pull water up towards it pull, pull magma up to it and um, you know, so it's it's not in effect like uh, it's not the same thing as a um, a clear lens with the sun um, condensing photons. When you condense gravitons into a focal point, you're creating a dense gravity lo lo localized energy force, a uh, vortex, if you will, inside these things. But what they do is they pull things towards them. They when, once you set up that gravity vortex by lensing nano lensing on the planet you pull things towards it from from outside from underneath and uh, that's what they made these things for and there's a there's a cool little shot of another lens there's water as a lens mostly everything actually everything that's you know in, in the in uh, in the universe has lensing capabilities when it comes to gravity this, on the other hand, has has also you know has a gravity lensing capability because gravity flows through everything, but it also has um, optic um, capabilities of uh, condensing optics, uh, photons. So, just a cool little neat uh, visual for everybody out there. I always need visuals myself. Here's a, 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 a somewhat of an aerial view of a pyramid, and you'll see the. This is actually what's going on, and when you see a pyramid on the ground, this is what's actually going on underneath the pyramid. It will pull the water up towards it, the, the groundwater up towards it, and it'll make a nice round lens. It's actually, this thing is seeds a liquid lens underneath the pyramid. So you create the, the energy, create the uh, dense gravitational fields inside the center line of the pyramid. You pull the water up towards it, and actually, you you know, you got a 450-foot uh, square pyramid, 6.6 .6 million tons, and then all of a sudden you got a three-mile wide lens connected to the bottom of it, and it is also condensing the gravity um, wave and creating another focal point down lower underneath it, hundreds, maybe thousands of feet below it, and that in, in effect will interact with the magma currents or the magma uh, magma streams or magma chambers in the planet. 
and um, your ancient geoengineers, the Anunnaki, the Atlanteans, humans, are all humans, you know, uh, in the human family. They might have different, uh, different shapes and stuff, but they're all humans. Uh, same DNA strands, well, close. Some of them have uh, caps a lot longer down the ladder than we do, but um, not to get off topic. This will, these things will set up to, there's three, three possibilities, three, three possibilities here, or three reasons for pyramids is, uh, one is to control magma currents. Um, you can create a relief valve on a magma chamber 180 degrees from pyramid to a volcano. Every large pyramid on the planet has a volcano lined up within 180 degrees opposed to each other and on the same approximate latitude. For instance, the Giza Plateau lines up with the Hawaiian hotspot. Um, and uh, basically, that this those pyramids were set up to create a relief valve for the magma chambers when the Earth is going in and out of high density or high cosmic energy uh, vortexes in the outer um, reaches of the uh, Milky Way galaxy. So we go in and out of energy vortexes. But anyways, that's one particular reason. Uh, Central America land strip there, there's about 300 pyramids, uh, twice the size of the ones in Giza, stone, megal they're just monsters down there. You can check out some of my other videos. I have the names and all that stuff if you want to look at the um, those pyramids. But uh, they were used to uh, shore up that strip of land. And when you put a pyramid on, on a on a on bedrock, that bedrock rises up all the time because what it does, it pulls the magma up to it. And when you soften up the uh, the land it, it, and allow the magma inner core pressure to rise up underneath the this ledge where you, where you put your pyramid or your grotto, if you will, it's going to rise the surrounding area up. So it's all it's all a uh, it's all a size. Um, 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 uh, what do you call it? Mathematics is uh, deep in mathematics. I have a, I have a formula out there that explains what, some of what these pyramids do. But um, you know, you build the pyramid to the size and specifications of what you need. So on that strip in Central America, there's like 300 and some odd pyramids from Mexico all the way to the northern tip of South America. And they, what they've done is they've raised that area up and shored up that land strip to keep the ocean currents separated because you don't want to have a, uh, if, if that thing had failed, if ever fails, it's going to wipe out the ocean conveyors on the um, Atlantic and the um, Pacific Ocean. So, I'm like getting off track here. I want to try to stay on my lensing. So this, that's what's going on. You got the moon um, pulling and tugging on these pyramids, and uh, it's not, they're all, everything's, everything's powered by the moon. It's rocking things back and forth. It's a constant, um, you know, energy force being exerted on the material. You can see somewhat of a, you know, a water lens here. You get your pyramid up on top, and you get a, you know, another. Here's the focal points in there. Here's your moon and the sun. I mean, they're all playing. The sun's a weak gravity force compared to the moon, and that's what's going on. It's pulling and tugging every day. You know, you get two high tides, two low tides a day. You get the moonless uh, high tide, low tide, and you got a moon high tide, low tide. Uh, another video on that, but uh, the formula explains the the energy. It's 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 close to optic physics. When I mean, it all comes down to it, it's, but it, it's um, it's gravity. It's the um, the angle of the mass, which is um, measured in radii, is uh, you know. So it's uh, my formula is A M C squared divided by D B. So A is the angle of the mass. So if you don't have any angle above the above the earth and there's no you know the earth is just a static gravity uh for the most part it doesn't have um external uh lenses on it so that's what pyramids and mountains are they're external lenses on top of the earth's surface and uh, i'm just checking the time i don't want to bore everybody to death so if you had just a completely spherical earth and no moon, you you would just have a static uh, gravity force on it. So you throw the moon into the picture, then you have now you have a a kinetic gravity force that's uh, stroking the um, you know the the uh, waves and the um, moon energy force. It moves trillions of tons of water a day. I mean, it is a big player. I think it's underestimated. A lot of physics physicists uh, 
teachers or whatever that come up with all these formulas and all this all these theories and everything and not you know very few of them actually bring the moon into play it's like well how can you have any kind of theory at all if on gravity on the planet taking gravity readings or explaining um you know how the gravitons and electrons flow in through the poles or whatever without in interjecting the moon because the moon is the the engine of this whole utopia that we're living in so with that i'm gonna just uh you know let you let you think about it. you got any questions throw it out to me um that's what's going on man it's wiggling back and forth constant motion it's a it's a uh, four-stroke engine here it's uh two pulls and two releases a day so um all right john shaughnessy here i wrote the book pyramid gravity force which is uh leading to a lot of these discoveries um you know raising the digit is another one of my projects i got a, i got five or six uh projects going at once but um help is on the way going to get this out there we're going to we're going to put this uh ancient technology back out there in the world because uh the way things are going today we need it you know we need to understand we need to start controlling our environment because um, we're basically out of control you know and uh you know we need to really rein it in and, and uh, get control over everything tectonic plates temperatures you name it so uh with that you have a good day and keep the faith people